folks. The uh, idea of an autopilot for this boat came about fairly uniquely. Really, it was came as a, a dream back in the winter of 23. I was reminded in the dream about installing my uh, an Autohelm autopilot in two different sailboats and thought, well, there's probably an application for an outboard or I could at least make a modification to make it work. First thing you do is search the internet, YouTube uh, specifically, and after an extensive search, I was able to find two or three different sources that gave me good information. Uh, and that's what I will uh, be describing over the next few minutes on how I made those modifications and how it has worked out on this boat. The first issue I had to solve was a remote control because the auto helm would be mounted in the stern of the boat and my helm seat is up uh, forward in the half deck. So that wasn't going to work. I needed a remote control. You can buy them, but they're very expensive and I didn't want to go that route. I didn't think it was worth it for this kind of a home built boat. So I will describe how I rigged up a remote that was much less expensive. Second issue I had to solve was how to attach the autopilot to the outboard motor, which does not have a tiller that's remote, remote steering as well as uh, remote throttle and also to have a solid base to mount the uh, uh, base of the autopilot itself to the boat since it was going to be over a gas tank. There was nothing there to attach it to. Uh, I was able to solve these issues. Again, I'll, you'll see that in the description here. Also be advised to check out the description for important information. I'll have several links in there on not only the video sources I use, how to wire the remote and where to purchase the various items. All right, folks, I'm working on an autopilot setup and I've already constructed parts and pieces for the boat. This is a, a component that's going to be the tiller. Since this is an autopilot ST1000 plus, it's designed for sailboats, not for an outboard motor. This will be my tiller. This is actually a bracket that fastens to the steering of the boat and I will just connect this and then the a pin will go in here that connects with this to operate the tiller and then to uh, support that autopilot that you see right here which I'm working on right now to make a remote for it this is a, a bracket that will go across the stern and then right here this will be mounted to and moved and wherever I need to to make it perpendicular to the tiller and then there's a pin that goes in here to mount the uh, autopilot into so those pieces I've already done, and now I'm working on the switch, this remote switch that I bought offline. It's actually from China for just a few bucks, and then I've got to white rewire the uh, switches here. This is the main component for that switch, and they will allow me to use a remote so I don't have to be back at the helm because the helm is in the stern of the boat. It's not convenient to be there. So right now I'm just trying to figure out the wiring because it's manuals that you get. <laughs> this is all you get from, from uh, one little sheet. Not very helpful. The videos that I was able to watch on TV and there was a guy from Hungary that put together this brochure installing the how to install it. So I'm using his resource. And then there was another fellow that also did that and he provided some more pictures to save a little on the wiring and that's what I'm in the process of doing right now is soldering these wires to make this switch work or this remote I should say work. So anyway that's the proce process of what's going on right now and we'll continue to work. So we'll turn the soldering iron on get that going. It looks like I maybe left my meter on all night I don't know hope not. And I got to figure out how to jumper these across. So let's see. I need to look at that, I guess, first. So this, I believe this, these two are, these two need to be connected. Connected up to my Blue Eddy here, solar generator to uh, run the autopilot. Yeah, I've turned it two, 12 volts on to get the autopilot working. This is the, uh, controller right here and it's in the standby mode right now. We'll try the buttons. That's a uh, one degree change going out one, two, three degrees or more. Coming back three degrees 
and then we can go into uh, autopilot and then that way if the autopilot is turning it'll make adjustments we'll put it back in standby I worked and worked and worked on this and had nothing but trouble and determined that there was a little jumper on this little uh, box here that was causing me trouble and uh, wouldn't allow it to work and uh, nobody mentioned that in any of the videos that I watched and the instructions for the device were not clear enough to make any sense out of it. Typical Chinese stuff. I spent all of eight dollars I think for this by the time it I don't know how they can even afford to send it from China I don't know. Regardless it's working and I'll put it together now and uh, I'll be ready to test in the spring. I'm real pleased with this. I uh, Instead of using duct tape and a bunch of wax and stuff I went ahead and used just uh, zip ties and uh, we'll go with that so I think it'll be plenty firm and I'm pleased with the wires hopefully now it'll close up without any trouble so we'll see that's enough for now guys okay folks here's an overhead shot showing the final ins installation there was a few problems one as you can see in this shot the base mount half inch pieces of HDPE uh, and I think there's uh, at least uh, seven or eight of them there. I can't remember. But when you start putting some pressure on the tiller through the autopilot, it twisted the base mount there. So I, I needed to have some support of that uh, plastic block, basically. So that was the next step. And I put a bolt through, the, through that HDPE and stainless steel support provided the strength I needed there to keep that base, that aluminum base from twisting. All of the materials that I used in this uh, construction of the, the mounts and so on using the aluminum angle, that came from excess that I had from uh, when I did the solar panel work. I used uh, that angle aluminum for the uh, framework for the solar panels. So that was left over and I just used that material and then the HDPE, that was just a uh, leftover from the sliders that I installed on the bunks on the boat. So I just was able to use that material without uh, having to purchase something else. But it worked fine. Uh, I did have to sand things down and work it a little bit to make it look decent. But as you can see here, that's uh, it worked out. Here's a vertical shot uh, of you know where the uh, brace is compared to the base. Uh, fortunately, I had just enough uh, room there to go ahead and run that bolt in through the uh, stainless steel support structure there. Uh, I just used a galvanized bolt. I couldn't find a stainless bolt that was that long and provided what I needed for a decent price. So I used galvanized. And here's another overhead shot with the bolt in place. Uh, you can see it there running through that stainless tube and the rest of the uh, layout. So it worked out uh, well in the end. All right, I'm going to show you a little bit of what the autopilot is doing on your way. Uh, it's holding an excellent course right now. We're on a long 10-mile stretch of open water up to the Kelvin Island area, Wilson Island in particular. As you can see, the autopilot's working pretty uh, smoothly, minimal amount of steering. I've had a few instances where it doesn't do quite as well. I don't quite understand that if that's just anomalies of iron ore under the surface of the water because it, there doesn't seem to be an explanation. Uh, this morning I was having a little of that on one course, uh, but then later on it was fine. Uh, pretty much the same course I'm on right now.